Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Most of our planet is covered with water, and on occasion, a shore canal strategically placed could save ships thousands of miles of unnecessary travel time and money. It took time and some genius ideas to move giant ships across terrain, such as the Panama Canal, not to mention the Suez Canal. When it opened in 1914, the Panama Canal, a 50-mile technical marvel, changed trade around the world in a big way. The canal in Central America links the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, making the journey much shorter for ships that used to have to go around the dangerous Cape Horn at the southern tip of South America. The United States didn't finish the project until the early 1900s when President Theodore Roosevelt was in charge. The canal is now an important part of international maritime trade, making it easier for cargo to move and helping the world economy become more integrated. Ships get in line and wait their turn as they get close to the Panama Canal. When fully operational, the canal handles about 14,000 transits a year. To keep things running smoothly, Ships must stick to strict schedules. The canal authorities check and grade each ship to make sure it meets certain requirements for transit, such as the right size and type of goods. There are several locks in the Panama Canal that allow ships to go up and down the different levels of the hilly interior. Three main sets of locks make up the canal. These are Gatun, Pedro Miguel, and Miraflores. Like water elevators, each lock has big chambers filled with water to raise ships or drain water to lower them. Ships can stay on the right course through the canal with the help of navigational aids like beacons, buoys, and signal lights, especially in Gatun Lake. Each ship has a specially trained pilot on board to take care of navigation and ensure the ships move accurately through the locks and canals. Electric locomotives called mules run on lines resembling train tracks next to the locks and are an important part of how the canal works. These mules, which get their name from the animals that pulled ships in the past, help big ships move through the locks by keeping them stable. Mule operators are very important.
They carefully steer the mules so that ships can stay level and in the middle, which lowers the risk of them hitting the lock walls. In each lock chamber, there are two pairs of mules, one on each side of the ship. They work together to control the lines that are connected to the ships. Since the canal opened, a lot of progress has been made in the technology of the mules. These days, mules are powered by electric engines and have advanced methods for stopping and pulling. Each mule has a strong towing winch that can pull huge loads. These tram resembling vehicles move along tracks that run along the sides of the locks. This lets them precisely control the ship's speed and direction. Multiple mules working together on a single vessel simultaneously ensure that the ship stays stable and moves easily through the locks. Once the ship is safely inside, the huge lock gates close behind it. Water then fills the space, slowly raising the ship to the next level. During this process, mule drivers must keep adjusting their controls to keep the systems perfectly aligned and balanced. Along with mules, tugboats are very important to the Panama Canal, especially for bigger ships. These strong tugs help guide ships through tight passages and into lock chambers, making sure that they can move safely and precisely. When ships get close to the canal, tugboats help them get to the right place. They work with mules to keep things stable and under control. Like mule drivers, tug operators are very skilled and work together to keep the ship in the right position and at the right speed. This work together with tugboats and mules, shows how complicated and precise the operations are, which makes the Panama Canal a modern engineering wonder. One cannot mention the Panama Canal without mentioning the Suez Canal as well. Since it opened in 1869, the Suez Canal has been an important waterway through Egypt. It links the Mediterranean Sea to the Red Sea, making the journey by sea between Europe and Asia much shorter. It's about 120 miles long and is still one of the busiest canals in the world. A huge container ship, the Ever Given, got stuck in the canal in March 2021 
stopping all traffic. It took several days of work to save the ship. Dredgers were used to remove sand and mud from around the bow. Tugboats pushed and tugged on the ship, and high tide was used strategically to finally free the ship and move it again, allowing canal traffic to resume. Some very large and formidable warships in the world, like the USS Abraham Lincoln, need to pass through the canal. Seeing them go through the Suez Canal is amazing. These ships, which are more than 1,092 feet long and can carry up to 100,000 tons, move very smoothly through the 120 mile long canal. The transit has to be carefully planned and organized because the canal can get as narrow as 205 feet in some places. Because of where it is, the carrier could be attacked from land or air during this passing. There are also rules against using the flight deck and radar to keep them from interfering with other canal traffic and equipment. These big ships often need help getting through the canal. A group of tugboats keep them straight and steady. The fact that the U.S. Navy can quickly move its ships between the Mediterranean Sea and the Indian Ocean through the Suez Canal shows how important it is for naval movement. To ensure commercial ships get through the Suez Canal, they follow a very strict and well-coordinated set of rules. Most ships gather at either the northern entrance to the canal at Port Said or the southern entry at Suez. The narrow and twisting canal path is controlled by a canal pilot who gets on board each ship and steers it through the water. Ships travel in convoys and often go slower to avoid damage from wakes and ensure they can turn in time. Tugboats help bigger boats or boats that have trouble turning. Ships must also follow strict rules about how they communicate, how fast they can go, and how they can use navigational tools like radar and signaling systems. Because two-thirds of the Earth is covered by water, using shipping is critical, not only in the way they add additional transport options, but also in how much tonnage they can accommodate. Canals, like the Panama and Suez, have shortened the distance ships have to travel by thousands of miles. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.